Greco, Mr. Danny Kaye. And I don't exaggerate. I like your shows. I like your nose. And I like your clothes design. Well, well, I like the flair, the ties you wear. And I think your hair is divine. I think the answer's clearly there that we like each other fine. We're gonna have a ball together, have us a swing in time.
gentlemen, the one and only Ella Fitzgerald.
Can we do this little duet? Pretty little song. Oh, yeah, that pretty song. Here's a tale of the fair land of Eden, where the deer and the leprechauns play. Sure, it's green that you'd best be aware of, for it's time for my wild Irish kid. Me little leprechauns. How are you this evening? You're all looking fine and healthy and fortified, to be noted. But you carry me to all and let the fellows of fort in a fairy tale. <laughs> That's what I'll be telling you this evening. I'll be telling you a little fairy tale. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I'll tell you an Irish fairy tale called Little Green Riding Hood. <laughs> also known as a tisket to tasket, there's booze in that there basket. <laughs> Once upon a time, Little Green Riding Hood was picking irises in her backyard. Oh, she was very fortunate with irises, she was. It's called the look of the iris. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, her mother was in the house packing a little lunch basket for Little Green Riding Hood to take to her sick grandma. Oh, now, Grandma was suffering from an unusual illness known in medical circles as the old lady's hangover. <laughs> <laughs> well, the little basket was filled with all the things Grandma loved best, you know. In it there were lovely flowers, a pretty bird, and something to tickle Grandma's fancy. <laughs> That's four roses, old crow, and three feathers. <laughs> It's amazing for a widow how much time old grandma spent with old granddad. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. I'm a brave soul. We're used to revolutions in our country. You know. Soon, soon it was time to set out for grandma's house. But no sooner, no sooner had she left the house when a wolf appeared. She was, he was a gorgeous, handsome wolf. Oh, he was that indeed, he was. He had the eyes of Charles Boyer, the face of Caddy Grant, and the shoulders of Joan Crawford. <laughs> well, now the little wolf looked at the little green riding hood and asked her where she was going. He kept insisting he did. He said, where, where, where? You see, he was a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> well, she very demurely and kindly said she was going to visit her sick little grandma. And the wolf said, you mean old bourbon face? Is that what you mean? <laughs> and then little green rider and told the wolf, now you take the high road and I'll take the low road. And I'll get the scotch there for you. <laughs> so little green riding hood started to walk toward her grandmother's house. But the wolf was no dummy. <laughs> oh, no. He figured out a way to get there first. He called his three friends, Bill, Mo, and Otto. And he told them, he gave them very specific instructions, you know. He got them to get down on all fours. And he placed Otto in the front. Mo in the middle and Bill in the back. That way they became his auto Mo Bill. <laughs> Shoot if you like. <laughs> Here he jumped on them and off they went and he took the Glockamora freeway all the way to Grandma's house. <laughs> oh, he, he, he had no trouble finding an Italian at all. It was the one with all the empties out front. <laughs> Grandma, you know, always had a man lying down in front of her door. And his name was Matt Maloney. And he kept saying, come in, come on in. That's what Matt said. He was her welcome, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Can't win them all, you know. <laughs> Well, the wolf knocked on the door. 
It'll be a job sobering him up, you know. We'll try that again, Buster. That's a little better. Grandma's voice in said, said, Who is it? Who is it? it, it? Well, you got just that, Miss Clancy, but sort of maternity, be tired to hold. Who is it? My child's vet. She had a cold, you see. And she was taking a little medicinal purposes, you know. A little booze she was drinking is what she was doing. Just a who is it? You could tell and the wolf answered, It's the little old winemaker, me. <laughs> so she let him in. And no sooner was he inside the house when the wolf heard little Green Riding Hood approaching. Now the wolf tied Graham up with a rubber band he once stole from the office of the defense secretary. <laughs> I'll give you a little time on that and see if you can come up with the answer. <laughs> He tied up Grandma with a rubber band that he stole from the defense secretary. <laughs> Can I hear? Can I hear too? <laughs> he called it McNamara's band, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're making me laugh when you do that now. <laughs> The wolf stuck her under the bed, and after that, the wolf put on Grandma's clothes. And suddenly, there was a knock on the door. <laughs> the wolf jumped into the bed and said, Come in! <clears throat> no. Come in! And little green riding hood in all her innocence and splendor walked in. She walked over to the wolf, and she noticed a ring on his finger and it had a huge fake stone in it. <laughs> it's what we call in Ireland a sham rock. <laughs> Nathan Hare was a piker compared to me with bravery. <laughs> Green Riding Hood got closer and said, Grandma, what big eyes you have. And the wolf said, I've been stretching my eyes wide so I can get the lead in the little orphan Annie story. <laughs> and the little Green Riding Hood said, Grandma, what a big nose you have. And the wolf said, thanks a lot, you're no Liz Taylor yourself. <laughs> and she said, Grandma, what a furry face you have. And the wolf answered, all the better to hide my terrible complexion with. <laughs> and she said, Grandma, what a big mouth you have. And the wolf said, all the better to eat you with, and he lunged for her. And why not? After all, it was his lunge hour. <laughs> well, he took a bite of her arm, and as she watched him eat it, she said, gee, Grandma, you shouldn't wolf your food out. <laughs> moment, without any hesitation at all, at that very moment, Miss Horford did flat it in the army, Miss Horford had, at that very instantaneous moment, <laughs> Little Green Riding Hood was saved. <laughs> on the rare number five written by Joe Pichorfis and he is winning the Santa Dirty Derby. There they were. She was saved by the U.S. Cavalry. <laughs> they rushed in and grabbed the wolf and he was furious. He grabbed the cavalryman's trumpet and he tooted it. Then he hit him in the eye. And the cavalryman grabbed the trumpet back, tooted it and hit the wolf in the eye. Now whether you know it or not, I've just told you the whole moral of this story. And here it is. An eye for an eye, and a toot for a toot. <laughs> All you pretty people, listen here. Got a special treat to bend your ear. Better pay attention, one and all. Cause
Cause Mr. Buddy Greco's gonna rock this hall She digs me over her shoulder. She wigs me out, Captain. How that sand off. Hey, baby, shall we go? Out skipping, careful of me go. She's flipping, speaks a Latin. How that sand She's nobody's fool, but I'm playing it cool as can be. I'll give it a whirl, but I ain't for no girl chasing me. Switch your room, telephone number. I'm with the Juno doing the rumba. I'm with you know and. My satin doll She's nobody's fool But I'm playing it cool as can be I'll give it a whirl But I ain't for no girl chasing me Switch your rooney Your telephone number With the Juno doing the rum Oh, uh, with you know, uh, and that my sad dog. Everybody, and that my sad dog. One more time, Bob. Oh. And that my sad dog. When we played our charade, we were like children posing, playing out games, acting out names, guessing the parts we played. Gee, what a hit we made. We came on next to closing, best on the bill, lovers until love left the masquerade. And you were gone While from the dark and way That music box played on Sad little serenade Song of my heart's composing I hear it still I always will Best on the bill charade Charade They seem to pull string I turned and you were gone while from the dark and way that music box played on sad little serenade song of my heart's composing I hear it still I always will best on the beat sure Recently, the newspapers have reported a number of romances involving young women and older men. What are the problems confronting a December and May courtship? Let us see. Yes, Mother, I know. Mother, I know that there is a big difference in our ages. But Randolph has asked me to marry him, and I'm going to say yes. I'm sorry, Mother, but my mind is made up. That's it. Mother, I have to hang up now. That's Randolph at the door. I'll call you later. Now, don't be upset. Hi, Rhett. 
Dr. Martin. Oh, a doctor? Yeah. I never know if I'll get to him on time, so I always carry him with me. <laughs> Put me down. <laughs> Are my feet touching? <laughs> Honey, I don't feel anything. Oh, are you feeling don't, don't pinch, Gladys. The skin doesn't go back. <laughs> help, help me off with my coat. Oh, yeah. Hey. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad to see that you're dressing warmly, Randolph. Well, it starts to get a bit chilly in July, you know. Hello? You comfortable now? Yeah, yeah, fine. Is everything all right? Well, yeah, I feel a little draft. Oh, no, darling, there's no draft in here. Oh, it must be you breathing on me, I guess. Oh. <laughs> Somebody coming out of the back. <laughs> Just wanted to see if you were paying attention. Yeah. Hey. Well, why don't you go over to the couch and you can be comfortable and rest yourself? I say? Uh, go over to the couch and you can rest yourself. Beat up, Gladys! I can't hear you. I was just suggesting that you could go over to the couch oh, yes, and rest yourself. Couch. Help me over to the couch. Would you like to? Couch. <laughs> Must be that same fellow with the chimes I had before. <laughs> uh, can I get you something, Randolph? Yeah, a couple of squirts of oil would do me a little good. Here. I could get him my joints. Uh, uh, Randolph. Uh, Randolph. Randolph. Huh? Randolph, didn't you hear me? Oh, I heard you, but I forgot I was Randolph. <laughs> Thinking over what you uh, asked me the other day. Yeah, well, what? what, what? <laughs> what I asked you the other what did, what, did, what, did, what did I ask you the other day? Oh, don't you remember? No, if I can't remember I'm Randolph, how am I going to remember anything else? <laughs> well, you asked me if I would consider marrying you despite the great difference in our ages. I say age makes no... <laughs> age makes no difference. Well, perhaps yeah. perhaps not now, but, but in 30 years, huh? I'll, I'll be 59 and you'll be 127. <laughs> hey, all right, what's the use? It won't work, it won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. Well, why not? I'm just an old bag of bones. Oh, no, 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 that's yeah. not true. Then how come my dog keeps trying to bury me? <laughs> Randolph, Randolph, I don't care because I've, I've decided to marry you. You yeah. have? Yes. You mean it? Yes, if I, if I still thrill you. <laughs> <laughs> When I'm near you, I almost have a pulse. <laughs> Shall we seal it with a kiss? <laughs> Doctor.
where that came from. Uh... Oh, Randolph! Randolph, now I have a really big surprise for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Today's your birthday. Look, look where I got. Hey, Randolph. Huh? Look at that. What in tarnation hell's by thunder is that? <laughs> it's a birthday cake. Birthday cake? It looks more like the Chicago fire. <laughs> Now, if you blow out all your birthday candles... Blow out the candles? Sure. You must be kidding me. Oh, no, no, you can do it, huh? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I blew myself over with my own breath. My dear, and I, I will dance with you oh, at the wedding. Oh, Randolph, I will. dance with me? I mean, are you really sure that you can? I can, Gladys. Can I you? need you. Oh. I need you too, Doc. Isn't she really something? This is the realization of a long, long dream, because I've always dreamed that someday I may be able to work with Ellen, have her on a show, and here we are this evening. I'm very happy you're here. Oh, I'm happier than you. <laughs> Ella Fitzgerald, hello, hello. What do you say? What do you know? Couldn't be nicer. Glad to have you on the little show. You know I love your Kit Kat Kittle. Well, I'm crazy about your lady, be good. And it would suit me fine to just combine and so they sing together if you only would. Well, I would. And we could. And we should. Stood and sang like this before. We looked at each other in the same way then, but I can't remember where or where. Some September, Sing it right. sweet September in the rain, or maybe the sun yeah. was shining on high. Yeah, bright horizons in every new sky. Maybe my heart sang only blue, 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 blue songs. We'll dream some new dream. Mm -hmm. We'll show a new face. We'll 
start spreading sunshine all over the place with a new point of view in the sweet by and by we'll smile some new smile we'll spread some new joy we'll sing some new song up to heaven above we'll find us a brand new Before we go, ladies and gentlemen, I, uh, I'd like to read you this item from the World Auto Magazine. Famed auto engineer Wilhelm Gulisch has finally discovered a way to stop the noise inside your car. The moment the noise begins, put your hand over her mouth. <laughs> I'd like to thank Sergio Mendez, Brazil 66, Harvey Corman, Joyce Van Patten, Jag uh, Jackie Gregory, and of course... Just can't say enough for just all the living in Armando, you really <laughs> your stuff. You sure are a gas, my friend. And this is strictly all the cup, but we make the perfect blend. The hands on the clock are really flying. Where did the hour go? We got to say so long, bye bye, and wrap up another show. It's been a nightful, most delightful, we've all enjoyed it so. Sure had a gang of fun today, it's really been out of sight. One little thing we want to say before we turn out the night. Until we meet another day, 